potentially infinite damage? Hmm, let's check that one out. Hello and welcome to Pokemath episode 4. My name is Stefan Eriksson, I'll be your host for today's episode, where we're going to look at Stuffle, the potentially best card in format. Why am I saying that? Well, when I look at a card and I'm seeing something that can do potentially infinite damage, I would at least check it out. So what are we actually going to do today? Well, we're going to look at such types of attacks. So without further ado, let's get into continuous tumbling. So the motivation for this is, well, how much damage could you actually expect of such attack? We all know they will say, flip until you get tails for each hit, do X amount of damage. And then you'll be like, but I'm pretty good at flipping heads, am I? That means that card is just for me. So let's just check it out. So first of all, Stuffle is not alone. That was just something to lure Ross Gilbert in here. Sorry, Ross. So we also have like Applin, Continuous tumble, flip until you get tails again. Do 10 damage for each head. We got Licky Licky, which is, well, 50 plus each head. Then we got Marowak. Well, you get the idea now. And then Ferro Seed. But last but not least, we also got Parental Fury. I can kind of relate to that now, but okay, fine. Which is also just 40 for each head. They all have the same thing in common. It's flip until you get tails. And the big question is, how much damage can you actually expect such an attack to do? Well, how are we gonna look at that? There's two ways I'm gonna present to you. And well, spoiler, they pretty much boil down to the same thing. It's just two ways of seeing exactly the same thing. So two sides of the same coin or whatever you wanna, however you wanna put it. So the two ways we're gonna look at is A, or one, a sum of an infinite series or as an expected value of a geometric random variable. Notice this is not the hypergeometric distribution which I've been talking about for like three episodes straight. No, I'm not gonna touch the distribution today, I promised. But it doesn't stop me from saying the word geometric. So <clears throat> let's look at number one, shall we? So if we look at an infinite series, what is an infinite series? Well, that's something that potentially goes on forever and ever. So now we have continuous tumble here. You can think about the damage in the following way. We have base damage of 10. That's just by reading the card, it says 10 damage. And then it says, flip until you get tails, for each head you do 30 damage. It's roughly what it says in my own words, right? But this you can represent the following way as i done on the screen here. And the way you do that is say 10 plus half times 30, why half? That's the probability of you flipping heads with a fair coin. We are assuming fair coins here, no rigged anything or rolling head on a die you choose. But nothing rigged here, they all follow the rules. Then you can say, okay, what is the probability that I'll flip the next one head? Well, they are independent, however, now they all go together because you flip onto your flip, flip tails. So that would mean in order to do the next 30 damage, there's one quarter of a chance if you go through that way. And then one eighth, then one sixteenth, then 132, one over 32, one over 64, and so on. Well. Let's start by rewriting this to something a little more manageable. So we see there's a common term here, which is 30. So I'm gonna start by taking that one outside the bracket. So these are the same things. There's nothing different here. But then the question is, well, we can figure out 10. We can count. Yeah, we can count. And then we just need to figure out, well, what's the sum of this? Well, the way we can look at it is as follows. So we can first identify this as what we call a geometric series. Why is it geometric? Because there's a constant ratio between two consecutive terms. So we have the two first terms here, say there's a half, then there's a quarter, one eighth, and so on. And then what is the ratio between such two terms? Let's look at the first one. So if you take this term divided by that term, as we do here at first, we get a half. One quarter divided by a half is a half. You can check that. Just do it on your calculator, Excel, whatever you prefer. We can do the same for the next two terms. So you see two consecutive terms. So we look at one eighth divided by a quarter and we can get a half and so on. So because there's this constant ratio, we can define this as a geometric series. And then of course, rules tells us, well, I'm not going into the proof of how we can calculate the sum of a geometric series, but please believe me when I say it's the 
it's de defined as a1 divided by 1 minus r, where r is the ratio, and uh, I'll check uh, back to that in a second, what we mean by the ratio, and a1 is the first term in the series, the first term here being a half. And of course, r has to be between minus 1 and 1. This ratio, said I would get back to it, but I'm just going to take it straight away, is simply what I calculated here, which in our little example here is a half, this constant ratio, right? So now we actually have all the components that we need to be able to calculate the sum of such infinite series. We know what a1 is, that's the first term, so it's a half. And we know what r is, which is also half. So let's plug that in. Then we get half in the a1's place, a half in r's place, and we get 1. Sum is simply just 1. That means that we can simply just put 1 into the place instead of the sum. I would, uh, If you want to hear more about your metric series, I would invite you to watch some videos I've put in the description below, or links to some websites that are very nice to do so. Then you can also learn further of that. Here I'm just going to show you the application. So what do we have here? We have the base damage of 10 plus 30 times 1. 1 was the sum of the series, which gives you an expected damage output following this infinite series of 40, which simply just means, well, 40 is the expected outcome. And how can we generalize that a little bit for this result is that we have base damage plus damage multi multiplier, English. Whee. So we see here 10 is the base damage and 30 is the damage multiplier. That was the extra damage we got per head. So that means using it as the sum of the infinite series, we get an expected damage output of 40. Now, there's also another way of doing it, and that might sound a little more technical, although I actually prefer this way, but okay. We can also think about the damage output as being a random variable x. So I'm just gonna call it x, I can call it y, c, psi guard, whatever, doesn't matter. What are we trying to figure out? We're trying to figure out that for continuous tumble in this case, because we like stuffel, who doesn't like stuffel? Then we try to calculate, and this get, might get technical for you, but please bear over with me, I'll try to explain. We have the expected value of continuous tumble, which is simply just write, uh, written as E brackets continuous tumble, is the same as the expected value of some constant, that's our base damage, so C, plus a multiplier K, multiplied by X, which is the random variable, which is basically until we get tails of this flipping madness, right? Rules and regulations, or I shouldn't call it regulations, that's stupid, but let's just call it the rule of uh, expectations, is that we can take a constant outside. That doesn't matter. So we can take both of these constants outside the following way. So we're actually calculating a constant, which is the base damage, plus damage multiplier multiplied by that expected value. So that's the way we're actually going to think about it. But then again, how can I just claim that this is a geometric random variable? Well, there are some rules it must follow, so let's look into that, okay? So, first of all, what is x? What is this geometric or random variable, right? It is the number of coin flips until you get tails, which we can say in another way, the number of successes until a failure happens. A success is a heads, at least I hope that a success is a heads for you, but in this case it definitely is. And a failure would be tails because then the attack stops, right? So, okay. What is a random geometric variable? Well, it has to have the following four conditions as we have here. First of all, each trial has to be defined as an outcome that is either a success or a failure. By a trial, I mean a flip of coin as a trial. It's pretty easy to say that each of them is a success or failure. Check. Second, each of the trials are independent of one another. Yes, because the probability of flipping ahead each time doesn't alter based on a previous one. So each of these trials, each of these coin flips are independent of one another. Okay. Then we have to have the same P for each trial, which means the same probability in this case. Because our coin is, well, fair, that means 50-50, we can safely assume that the probability of each trial is exactly the same. There's no learning effect here that you get better at flipping heads. There's no such thing. Get that out of your head right now. And then it has to be expressed as there's an unknown number of trials until you fail. So here's a big difference between a geometric random variable and a binomial random variable. Had this been a set number of trials, a fixed number, this would have been not binomial. 
However, since we don't know when we're going to stop, how many trials we have, in other words, we have you know as many trials until we get a failure, then this becomes a geometric random variable. So we have the how many trials until fail. And that's what we're actually trying to figure out now. So by defining as a random geometric variable or geometric random variable, I'm getting good at this, then we can say the expected value is p minus 1 divided by p. Please look at the link for description below to a nice explanation of, or not explanation, but actually deriving the, the proof why this is so. I could also sit here and spend the next 10 minutes deriving a proof, but I don't think anybody finds that interesting. I do, but I don't think you guys did. And that's also why I acknowledge other people's work and link to their work in the description below. But it also means, hey, we can calculate the expected value of this random geometric variable, which is just the probability of flipping ahead, p minus one divided by p again. Let's put in the numbers. That's just half minus a half divided by a half. Oh, that's one. That means we can put one in the place of the expected value of x back in our formula from earlier. That means 10 plus 30 times one equals 40. I think you have a little memory. That means in other words, base damage plus damage multiplier. Because I can calculate it for, for continuous tumble. It will be the same for any other of these types of attacks. The only difference is the damage multiplier. But this expected value, because they all say flip until you get tails, they therefore have the same expected value. So, okay, let's look into generalizing what we have found. Well, we used two different ways of doing this. We first can think of it as an infinite series. Then we actually have the following formula, which is base damage plus damage multiplier, multiplied by the sum of an infinite series. This turned out to be one, right? And then we can do it again as an expected value of a geometric random variable, which is the same formula essentially, but now with p minus one divided by p. Well, I've just shown them both of these are one, so we can actually boil this down to base damage plus damage multiplier. So that also means Stuffle might be the best card in format, best count or best card, BCEF, no matter what how you take the C for here, but that is, of course, if you can flip an abnormal amount of heads. However, what we learned here is that what is actually the expected damage output we have when we use such an attack. So for all these types of attacks, yes, there's these outlier events where you can flip 10 heads in a row, sure. But if you want to work with them a little more certainty, say, or you want to at least have an expected amount of damage, then it's just the base damage plus this multiplier. So for Stuffle's case, it's the same as saying on average for a double colorless, for two colorless energies, it does 40 damage on average. That is indeed how you can do so. And by that, that finishes today's episode. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's episode. I hope it didn't get too boring or anything like that. It got a little more technical at part parts, but you know, I hope you watched all the way to the end. And I, please don't forget to like and subscribe to, to this channel if you like what you see. And otherwise, I wish you a really good day and until next time.